Thank you all for coming to the first debate of this year's Black History Month 2019 Student Debate Series. My name is Don Williams, and I will be your debate moderator today. Everybody call it down for me. Today's debate. According to journalist Jason Whitlock, hip-hop culture is an utter failure. The Me First rebellious anti-intellect culture directly contradicts most of the values necessary to sustain a civilized society. Is his conclusion valid? Today's student debaters represent Mr. Subject's poetry and hip-hop class. We have two teams, the yes team and the no team. Please give both teams a round of applause for working hard to prepare for today's debate. <clears throat> now we will start. The yes team will now give their opening statement. In, eight, in 1982, one of the most influential songs of all time was released. This song was one of the first hip-hop hip songs ever recorded, told a story about people living in poverty and trying to escape the hood. It had lyrics that encouraged the listener to use their brains to avoid crime. That song was The Message by Grandmaster Flash, and it was an early form of conscious rap or hip-hop. 37 years later, we have lyrics that say, beat that blank up like Emmett Till from a song like Lil Wayne. This blank word is a nasty term for female anatomy, and he's literally making the comparison of having sex to a lynching. What kind of message is that? Overall, hip hop has become an utter failure. Jason Whitlock says this, the me first rebellion anti-intellect culture, culture directly contradicts most of the values necessary to sustain a civilized society. What this means is that hip hop has changed and is no longer a way of empowering the black community but instead gives more problems. Jason Whitlock wrote in this, art in this article, it has caused a lot of controversy by people that strongly agreed with him and those that disagree. He has received a great deal of backlash from the black community and others. This is a question that affects all Americans in some contexts, but especially African Americans. Hip hop is a huge part of black culture and the varying opinions on its role in society is sometimes controversial. The, the issue is, crea is creating a lot of conflict by, the, by way of glamorizing things that shouldn't be glamorized. This ultimately boils down to whether we should enjoy songs that promote or normalize misogyny, drugs, and crime. Hip hop is indeed a failure because the positive messages have been replaced by messages that promote or normalize violence, crime, drug use, and disrespect towards women. Thank you. Next, the no team will give their opening statement. The debate is about if hip hop culture is an utter failure. The me first rebellious anti intellect culture directly contradicts that most of the values necessary to sustain a civilized society. Is this conclusion valid? According to the Linear Dictionary, a civilized society is marked by well-organized laws and rules about how people behave with each other, being polite, responsible, and respectful, and pleasant, and comfortable. And you're telling me that in a civil society, hip-hop will cause it to be an utter failure? So in a civil society, hip-hop will cause it to be an utter failure, and it will cause you to think of only yourself. So you're saying it will give you a me-first attitude? But what if the society is already civilized, and hip-hop comes into the community? Will that society soon be considered uncivilized? The viral thing that we know as hip hop has truly advanced our culture. Many people argue that hip hop has influenced it to make it bad. Hip hop culture is not an utter failure. Thank you. Now the S team will present their first point. Okay, so what is the issue? A lot of hip hop glamorizes violence, crime, even disrespect towards women. There are dozens of example, examples of this. According to complex.com, violent hip hop generally falls into three distinct categories. Gun clap, clapping, physical beating, or slasher flick style. Horrorcore songs. For the sake of time, just, let's just focus on gun violence. Take Eminem, for instance. 
on the 1999 record Kill You. Eminem spends four minutes fetishizing over various ways to commit murder. In one lyric, he warns a woman that he'll put a bullet through her. In a skit of 2002 album, the Eminem show, Eminem is re reenacting a 2000, 2000 incident that found him threatening to kill his ex-girlfriend and her new boyfriend with a loaded gun. In 2004 song, One Shot, Two Shot, Eminem delivers a gun violence heavy, heavy hook and a verse riddled with reference, references to pulling triggers. One shot, two shot, three shots, four shots, all I hear is gunshots. This is where the fun stops, bodies drop, hit the floor, music, music's off, party stops. Everybody hit the floor, somebody's leaking, shots off. The list goes on and on, and that's just one rapper. And three of his songs. Think about two, how many teenagers are listening, are, are listening to his kind of music. He sold 100 million albums. And how can we be OK with popular artists pop, popular, pop, popularizing and glamorizing gun violence? while at the same time there are mass, mass shootings every year. Last year alone, there were 323, according to Washington, Washington Post. It is hypercritical of us to complain about gun violence uh, while also listening to and singing along to songs that, are, that talk about how cool guns are. For decades, hip hop has constantly been criticized for not being a particularly welcoming space for women. But of course, the issue isn't about the culture's treating treatment of women as performers, but also as human beings. Misogyny has also been an issue in media. The over-sexualization of women is appealing and quite degrading. This problem also slips by unnoticed because we have become dis desensitized to it. It's never viewed as a problem. Instead, it's uh, unnoticed because we have, no. it's never viewed as a problem. Instead, it's become normal to over-sexualize females in objectifying and mis misogynistic ways. This is a major problem. And if we love our mothers, sisters, wives, cousins, and friends, we wouldn't listen to it. This filth. Thank you. Thank you. Next, the no team will give their first point. Um, when music is going through something, when when kids is going through something. It is always a song to motivate them to get up and get out the slums. Music can help you stay motivated and focused. The act of listening to music can help you concentrate on a boring task. Focusing on a favorite song combats the motivating brain signals associated with fatigue or boredom. For example, listening, listening to music while working on a boring task can keep you energized and in the zone. People rely on music to get them through a tough workout or a long commute. Think, think of how you can use music to your advantage. Not only does music help learn their ability, abilities, but it increases focus on listeners. According to a Stanford University study, the STEAM college suggests incorporating music into a classroom environment to, to create a positive learning experience can improve in memory while increasing attention. Thank you. Thank you. Now the YES team will present their second point. Many of these songs, excuse me, sorry. Many of these songs glamorizes the use of drugs. For instance, 50 Cent has a song called High All The Time, where he sings he's high all the time and stays high all the time. You don't want me to be your kid's role model. I'll teach you how to buck them 
380s and load up them hollows, smoking endo, high as a beat. And basically, that's promoting kids to do drugs high all the time. Like, come on now. They say, what's some I say, what's wrong with weed? According to drugabuse.com, the strongest chemical in marijuana, which comes from the cannabis plant, the Delta 9 THC, when you smoke marijuana, THC binds in cannabis oil receptors in your brain and can cause lung damage and it can damage your re reproductive system. Pop that by French Montana. Bees know I'm that in where talking Ford or Bugatti. I'm the life of the party. Let's get these off that molly. Disrespecting women and rap and normalizing people. And they don't even know what they're saying sometimes. Ultimately, hip hop has become an utter, fa utter failure. In today's hip hop, everyone leans towards rap. Statistics show 68% of blacks and 43% of white adolescents have had sex during high school. 72% of kids agreed that in some way rap influences their decisions. Today, rap influenced my minorities to partake in violence, drugs, and sexism. This is exactly what these songs promoting. Thank you. Thank you. Now the No team will present their second point. A lot of people think that hip hop is all bad. They bring up some of the worst aspects, including songs about gun violence and guns. But hip hop only talks about these things as things that these rappers have been through because everyone knows in their communities that everyone has gone through the same thing. People think hip hop is a way to let the world know what is really going on in hood areas. Hip hop has gotten so many kids and young teens out of the hood. A lot of times they are motivated to do so, do so by the positive messages they hear in these songs. For instance, the song, the message of, by Grandmaster Flash is all about how violence is never the answer. As far as overcoming struggles, look at the song, Empire State of Mind by Jay-Z. That includes motivational messages such as, there is nothing we can't do. That means you can do anything you put your mind to. In fact, Jay-Z went from selling drugs and being poor to being one of the richest entertainers in the world and rapping about positive changes in the world. Many rappers and hip hop artists have overcome great adversities and now focus on positive things. Logic and Malcolm Moore now rap about fashion and Jordans. In the song, Keep Your Head Up, Tupac talks about how it is time to treat women better and that women should keep their hand, heads high and respected. Overall, there are tons of examples of positivity and we should be focused on that. Thank you. We will now have a three minute break for each team to prepare for the cross-examination part of the debate. The no team were asked their question first. Judges, please remember that the winner of the cross-examination gets two points. First up, the no team will have five minutes to ask questions to the yes team about their argument. So, so. So the problems that occurred and the points that you guys brought to our attention, you guys never brought up the positive. You guys never brought up the positive points. What? <laughs> All right. You guys never brought up the positive parts. All we heard was the disrespect of women, the use of drugs. But there's still parts that that show the positive part, and you guys never brought that up. So. Are they asking questions? Oh, yeah. Well, I feel like 
they say had have it become an utter failure? Well, I feel like it have, but back in the day, say the 80s and the 90s, that's when music was really popping, when women like uh, Queen Latifah, that's all they wanted was black power. That's all they cared about was really, you know, their freedom and what was going on in the streets. So yes, they used to talk about where they came from and, you know, how they got through the next day and, you know, what motivated them, but it's not all bad, but, now it is. Back in the day, it used to be better. But you can't say now, though, because rappers like Nicki Minaj and Cardi B rap about the exact same thing, and they're women. So how do you say now? Look, you don't really hear women talking about stuff like this. This is a quote from Left Eye. She say, my only chance at being free is if I fly within me. It's illegal to kill an eagle. A bird is never more important than my people. I guess we didn't need them, so they took away his freedom. You feel me? Stuff like that, that's more intact with your black culture. People, you don't always hear that. All you hear about is sex, basically, in every song, and drugs, and money. But, that's what it's all about. But then again, we're talking about now, not back then. We're talking about, is it an utter failure now? Oh, it is. It is? Yeah. Thank you. What other questions? Y'all can talk too. By backlash, what do you mean in backlash? What's wrong with the community now? You said what? You guys stated something about backlash? Backlash? I'm not sure about that. All right. In music performance, gun violence, without music, there'd still be gun violence, just not listened to on the radio. It'd be only on the news. That's true. That's just what influence is. It's more normalized now. Like it's more common, and I feel like everybody trying to. Even though like y'all have y'all rappers like J Cole, Wale, uh, Black, uh, you know, a couple lyricists out there that's actually want to um, promote good stuff and uh, not always about the bad stuff. It's just they just normalize it so much. Like the B word is is you can't find a song without it really, a rap song. And the N-word, that, that's so commonly new, uh, used. What's what side of saying? Let me see. I got one. He say, scuba watch and flee, purple leaves off the pur purple lean. That's obviously drugs, purple lean. Nah, y'all got kids out here doing lean, popping perks. He say, Percocets is my love. Like, what you think kids thinking? Perkies is my love. But don't you think that, that, that some raps are misperceived and you don't get the, the true point out of it? Like for a song like, like Jordan and Lucas, I'm not racist. He gives both sides of, uh, of the white community and the black community, but he uses the N-word in both forms. So don't you think it's misperceived though? What some people think of it? Well. Either way it go, the words shouldn't even, I don't know, it's just so normalized now. And people just throw it out the window as if it's just supposed to be like that's just somebody's first name type. And they just brush past it like that shouldn't be. Y'all can speak too. Can you blame Jordan? Can you blame Jordan Lucas for putting the N word in his song when it's been used for over 37 years? But he's just trying to get the points across from both African American, huh? Oh. Thank you. Next, the yes team will have five minutes to ask the no team about their argument. I'm, which um which college did the study on music that was productive to listen to? Stanford University. All right. Did they say which kind of music? Because as you presented it, you only said music. Hip hop. That's false. The best music to listen to while working, especially in the academic sense, is classical music. 
it's not about it's not about what type of music you listen to. It's, it, the music is about what best fits you. So whatever song you like, you could, that motivates you or help you out, then it's see, everybody don't like listening to jazz music. Some people want to listen to rap when they do their work. Understandable. You said you said rap gets the kids out of the hood. Explain how that happens. As a as a fellow athlete, when I'm down and I go to the gym, I listen to rap music. It's a lot of NFL players, basketball, NBA players that listen to rap that helps them better themselves. When they was kids, they wasn't just walking around. They was listening to music in the gym. So that's why I say that music helps people, motivate them, get them out the hood. But when it's constantly glorifying things like gun violence and misogyny and, you know, sex, and it's also statistically, you know, certain that most kids who grow up in a bad environment are products of their environment anyway. So when you add this thing, does that make it worse or not? I mean, it's all about, it all depends how you take it because the rappers is trying to get out too. They trying to make it out so they rap what they see. They're not going to lie about what they see. So if they see rape going on in their neighborhood, they're going to rap about rape. They see gun violence in their neighborhood, they're going to rap about gun violence. But what, what, about, what about the act in which it's preached about and glorified? It's not necessarily glorified. It's, it, the, the opposite message is to look at the opposite thing to, so they won't do it. Eminem so wrote a song about drugs. shooting people in the club. Hey. He just said the lyrics out loud. Was it one shot, two shot, three shot, four? In a, in a, public, in a public space. What about that? How does that just how's that justified? We had um what was it? It was um how many how many shootings did, mass shootings did we have in last year? 323 mass shootings. Where did you get all these facts from where we got all the shootings? Washington Post. The Washington Post. But were all those were all those caused by hip hop? Did yeah. hip hop influence all of those? Where is your proof that it was influenced by hip hop? All right. All right. Were the students all influenced right. by hip hop? Let's see. Let's see. Well, y'all stated that it increases focus on listeners and uh, how people behave with each other, and it says seventy percent of adolescents connects with these aggressive behaviors in some way. And I feel like rappers tend to create sounds appealing to the ears and portray different hidden messages. Like, um, he say, we ain't, nigga, we ain't playing. We gonna find out what he's saying. Okay, this, is, this ties in with the um, guns. N word, we ain't playing. We gotta find out where he's staying. Get on infrared, two, two, threes, squeezing at his head. And that's all you hear. Like, people can easily say, I'm not convinced. I'm not, you know, influenced by rap. And what they don't know is what you surround yourself with is how you're going to think, but he how you're going to move. He pointed out school shootings. You're talking about just one rapper rapping about certain things. Oh, Which I got a couple of them over here. Obama said the single greatest cause of deaths for young black men between 18 and 35 is homicide. And African Americans have the highest incarceration rate. And that's hip hop. Is that hip hop fault? I mean, when you preach, when you preach, oh my God, when you preach, um, when you when you preach violence constantly, like she said, you make your, you're a product of what you listen to and what you surround yourself with. Thanks. So, So you're saying that all hip hop is not with gang members not being there and shooting each other up still, just because it's most of? No, I'm not, but I'm saying in the grand run, it has done nothing for us, and it's only made us sensitized to things that we shouldn't be sensitized to. You said it's done nothing for us? It's done nothing for the black community as a whole. Besides mm. motivate us? Hold on. <laughs> oh, wait, that's a good point. You right. Do your thing. Nah, bro. Besides motivate us? Right. Say again. Thank you. We will now have a three minute break for each team prepared for the debate conclusion. The yes team will, will ask to present their conclusion first. The yes team will now present their conclusion.
In conclusion, hip hop nowadays is doing more damage than good. Many young people listen to these rappers and they try to intimidate them, but it's not doing anything but increasing crime all around the world. In fact, since the introduction of hip hop in the late 70s, rape, murder, robbery, and assault rates have all gone up according to the Uniform Crime Report. Rappers that talk about guns and killing people are only influencing others to actually go out and do it. Just look at people like Biggie and Tupac, dead. Victims of, that life, victims of the lifestyle they were glorifying and preaching. If hip hop were making more positive songs, then there would be a slight change in the world as far as crime and domestic violence. Children in this generation care a lot about others' opinions and they feel like they have to be somebody that they're not. Doing drugs is not cool. Talking bad about women is not cool. And getting involved with gangs is not cool. Hip hop makes all of that seem cool, but it is not. It is very serious and you can get in a lot of trouble. And Instead of trying to impress others, just be yourself and don't listen to all of the negativity. Because everybody is not a gangbanger, but rap music makes you think you are, and that is how many young teens get caught up trying to live that lifestyle. This is a lose-lose situation. If they try to get in that lifestyle and succeed, they'll likely end up dead or in jail. If they try and don't succeed, then they'll still, they've still tossed away the opportunities to have a normal life with a respectable career. As the rap industry gets more raw, it is doing nothing but increasing crime. If hip-hop truly was inspiring and game-changing, then we would see less incarcerations, more opportunity, and more economic status. We rarely see that, especially when considering most hip-hop artists are people of color. We have tons of issues with hate and prejudice. Jason Whitlock is right. Hip-hop is an utter failure. Even if it isn't, it is clear that it is not a success. Thank you. Thank you. The no team will now present their conclusion. Overall, we think that hip hop is not a failure, but in fact a success. For millions of listeners, listeners feel better from the lyrics to the hip hop of dozens of artists that uh, music as ways to escape his negative lifestyle is actually more positive than negative. Hip hop supports a large part of the economy and at the very least a big role in it in music, entertainment, fashion, lifestyle, and general. It is easy to focus on the negative when it comes to almost any topic, but if you look a bit closer, you will see that, a positive, that the positive outweighs the negative. If we start focusing on the positive, maybe it will eventually make all the negative go away. Just look at us teenagers. Most of us listen to it. Are we bad people? No. We may make mistakes, but overall, are we good kids? Yeah. And want to be, do good things. We all start making mistakes, but eventually we can overcome these mistakes and better ourselves. What's more motivation than that? Thank you. This ends our debate. Please give both teams a round of applause for working hard to prepare for today's debate. Now, we will give our judges a couple of minutes to complete their scoring to determine our winner. Well, thank you all for coming to the first debate of the 2019 Mount Clemens Black History Month debate series. Today's winner is the Yes Team. Give them a round of applause.